Yo, what's going on guys? Today we'll be looking at the very first oracle on this video. It being Alan, he is the sun oracle. In my opinion, probably the number one oracle in terms of damage. I don't know if he's the best oracle, but for damage, he has no contest right now. And he brings a big wall up to fire that they didn't really need. To be honest, in layman terms, this character is pretty much fire version of fairy. So, if you know how good fairy is on light, well, now they got a fire one. Because they needed that. Now, Alon, he is a attack unit, which, is, I mean, it's okay. Cause it does go well with Shiva. Um, he also has a staff specialty weapon. So, that also goes really well with Shiva. So, this pretty much gives staff a lot more viability when it comes to being mained on on a uh, fire that's why you would be seeing a lot of fire warlocks as of late in Bahamut high level because it does have a lot of good synergy together right now now his ogi is actually well to be honest all arkham ogis are hella depression i don't know why they went with this like still image moving i don't like that i have to complain about it i think i'm gonna complain about it every time with every um oracle i keep calling them arkham characters but they're actually called oracles but um anyways i gotta i gotta throw that out there <laughs> um his his ogi's not bad but it's not that amazing he just gets a boost to ca damage specs when the field effect sun touch paradise is active that being that he gets 50 percent more charge attack damage and 15% CA damage cap increase. Not bad, but definitely better for high level stuff. Um, Sun Touch Paradise is a really amazing skill, so you're pretty much gonna have that up most of the time anyway. Now, as I mentioned, skill one is Sun Touched Paradise. Now this skill is ridiculous. I don't know who was side games were programming this skill, but this skill, it makes no sense. What were they thinking? They decide to give the fire the ability to crit any element, regardless of element. So water, critable. Earth, critable. Everything. Light, dark, don't matter. No, don't matter. Everything is crit. And I don't understand why. <laughs> and not to mention you do get an attack boost and defensive lowered. So it's kind of like flare but it's only local that part of it so it's ridiculous i don't know why they added this um ability do note that this um buff right here is local so this is not apply to everyone it only applies to your party and it's ridiculous it's actually ridiculous the only balancing thing about it is eight turns i guess but it's ridiculous. I don't think that's very fair. Um, I will like this on every other element because this is hella broken. <laughs> so, uh, side games, please balance your game. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Next, we're looking at skill two. As I mentioned, this is the fairy button. If you have fairy from um, light, uh, here we go. It's pr the exact same skill word for word, they changed nothing other than put it on another element unit. So it still had the shortened effect. It still gives the 25%, my fault, 30% bonus damage and guaranteed TA. Actually, 100% TA. There's a difference, actually. There's a difference between 100% TA and guaranteed TA. 100% TA can be removed and you can have it lowered. So. I just had to throw that out there because I, I think I mentioned this before in the previous video that there is a difference between boost and guaranteed. So Next, we'll be looking at Wrath of the Goddess, which is his skill three. Now, this is not, not a bad skill, but compared to the other two skills, it's pretty okay. You get a thousand percent fire damage to all foes, which is the AOE nuke. Not bad. That's about one million. Not, not bad. Not bad nuke at all. Also, he applies a bunch of debuffs. One being hit to attack and defense. Do note that they last only four turns, but they do cap with mist. So that's 25 each. Not bad, but it's only four turns. On a pretty hefty cooldown, being 12 turns. 
So it's, it's not really reliable if you're using him to defend, um, to cap defense down. But he does come with fear, which is not bad. Uh, it's still being local is pretty mediocre, but it's it could be useful in certain scenarios if you don't want the boss to owe you. Like Team Up Malice. It's, this is not bad at all. And on top of that, he gains two abilities, which is uh, party wide HP lowered every turn, which you cannot be removed, and uh, another one, which is HP lowered every turn. So it's okay. One applies to the boss, and one applies to your party. So keep that in mind that you also um, get afflicted with the HP lowered every turn. Not that great on stamina builds fire, but if he had the way to counteract this um, overall da dot damage, so. Uh, hold up, there you go. Now, Benevolent Soul is his passive, boost to fire allies healing specs when the field effect Sun Touch Paradise is active. This is not bad. It does give you a, a boost to your heal. Main characters like Sage and Anilla. Pretty good for an ultimate. Oh my God, I did it again. For Fa. <laughs> for Fa raid, it's not bad at all because fire healing is not the greatest. So having the boost from him does help a little bit. Now, with Oracles, they do have two abilities. They have a sub ability and then they have an ability when they come into the main into the main group um his sub ally ability is to boost the fire allies healing specs removes one debuff from a fire ally when that ally takes turn-based damage turn-based damage meaning dot damage over time so poison stuff like that which is not bad um it usually clears the debuff that poisons you. That's what he's mainly using it for, but it's not bad. That, and he also gives the boost of fire allies healing. This one is not um, subjected by the uh, Sun Touch Paradise. So keep that in mind that this is just always going to be active. As long as he's in the sub party. And it stays even if he leaves the sub party. So keep that in mind that this effect will stay even if he leaves sub party. So if he comes into the front row, it counts. And for his last ability, now this only happens when he comes into the party. Like all oracles, they gain the ability to give a buff whenever they come in. His buff being a blessed radiance effect. Um, this boosts your defense and gives you a uh, drain for a little bit. It's not a lot, it's about 800. So you get drain eight for 800, but for the rest of the fight. So over a long course fight like Fa, this is very valuable because you get another heal just for free. All he did was come into the fight and then you got another heal. Not bad at all. Um, this is not something you probably use in like low tier fights, but in Fa, it's not bad. I think it's pretty decent. Um, that's about it when it comes to this unit. His EMPs are not the greatest. JK, they're the greatest. I don't know who, I, I try to like, um downplay this unit but i can't but his emps are pretty good got fire attack everywhere critical he got he he got too many good emps <laughs> it's, oh how do you oh, what <laughs> this unit's ridiculous um i don't think he's game breaking but he hella good though <laughs> so that's alan he's he's amazing let's go see him in a fight that's all i can tell you I definitely recommend him as the first Oracle if you're a fire main or you if you're looking towards W. The other units, but Oracles have a huge time gate, so it's gonna take a long time for me to see another video on another Oracle. But until then, whatever, we'll look at him for now. So let's get to that fight. Okay, so I decided to take on the easy boss, but I didn't take on the boss that you probably think I'm gonna take on. I take on a boss that, you know, not many people fight. Now, I have Ayer in, in the front row so that Alon can come in and get his passive ability. This is pretty much the most optimal way right now. Are you think death 
Um, those are the, like the most common ways of instantly getting your Oracle in the front row. He has hostility up too, so it does help. So we're gonna go with that. I guess we could drop the sun. Okay, Missing debuffs already. Amazing. Good way to start the game. My favorite. Nothing gets me happier than missing debuffs. Go with that. So I went with Sage, as I, as I mentioned. Um, I don't think I need the healing, but I just decided to go with it. I did mention the whole Ultima thing. Okay, so he should come out right now. That's pretty cool. So we now we want to get to 100% if we can. Try to get to 100% as fast as possible so we can get that full party. So you can see there that the damage over time is affecting us, but we also get the drain from every auto. So it's not it's not that bad, honestly. Also, it does help with the fingers, like fingers to gain um, a little bit more damage. We take damage. So we did get that. So now we get to use our fairy button, because, you know, that's fair. Nothing wrong with that at all. Clearly, this looks, this is perfectly okay. Actually, nothing wrong. Oh God, did it get mirror image? It does. Oh, it doesn't matter. We have Agni anyway, so. Just gonna use Agni there. Now maybe we can cap defense down. Keep in mind that defense down was not capped at that point because I missed it. I just, want, I just want to throw that out there. Okay, cool. Uh, go with this. I'm actually going to save extra skill too, right? Should I? Yeah. Let me make it sir. I didn't really have to hit our skill three, but it did get bonus damage too. Push that back again. Try to get to the 50 if we can. Okay. I want to make sure I'm in a good situation where I can not die from like the 10% trigger. I remember the bot having a really strong trigger. It's been a while since I've done it though. I thought about bringing Rune Slayer, but I didn't bring the Rune Slayer because it's like I mentioned the whole Ultima thing, so I thought why not do this? Oh, thanks for um, lowering my multi attack. Sick. Uh, go with this. this. Well, that's our multi attack. That is the question today that we're about to find out. I think that's that bad. I went better than expected, to be honest. So we get that. Hit some defense downs. I don't know if we have defense down capped. We, yeah, we do. Okay. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now drops this. Drop Shiva again. Fire. Very fun element. 
<laughs> I have no words for this element. I, I just don't. Fire. Disgusting element. People who play fire should feel bad. Oh, he dodged. Because we don't have a summon right now. I try to avoid this. Like, try to kill it before this happened, but... Rest in peace, that didn't happen. This is AoE, so that's a hit. Yeah. I think it had another trigger at 10, I think. It's been a while since I've done this fight. Oh, in case anybody asking me about the Dark Orpus weapon, um, it's not in the pool because I don't have skill fodder at the moment. Just in case anyone's asking. I need like a day or two to get enough skill fodder for everything. Currently. Uh, oh, we had a mirror image on. I didn't realize. Uh, that could be the end of the fight, I think. But yeah, that's fire. Fire is pretty cool. What, 16 turns? Not bad. I think Rune Slayer would have done it in 12, though. But it's not Rune Slayer. This is Sage. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comments and I'll try to reply to you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this video and thank you guys for watching. So, later.